In this video, we'll see an unusual permutation of the Greek gift sacrifice on h7. Now, this position occurred in the game Paul Keres against uh, Robert Wade uh, from the 1954 match between uh, England and the USSR. Black has just played the move c7 to c5, which uh, had as its goal to strike at white center in the typical French fashion. If you notice, white's down a pawn. This position ar arose from the uh, from the Al Alech and Chatard attack, uh, where white sacrifices a pawn on the king side. So it looks like black's king is relatively safe with his h pawn well guarded by his rook, and now he strikes at the center. But Keres showed that the large amount of force that white has facing black's king meant that white could still sacrifice and break through in this position. Another big factor that makes the sacrifice work is the presence of this strong pawn on e5, which gives white a space advantage on the king side and in the center. It makes it hard for the black pieces to come over to defend. So Keres began with the move, bishop takes h7 check. This uh, removed this important pawn in the typical fashion of the Greeks, Greek gift sacrifice and drew the black king out. So black had to take on h7, and now came, uh, because of king f8, then knight to g6, check, wins the queen. And now came rook takes h7, and now came rook takes h7 by white, king takes h7, and simply castles. So white brings his last piece into the game. The rook will be a crucial uh, piece in the attack. There was no sense in immediately giving the check on h5. It's just that check really can't be stopped in any effective way. Uh, so here black had a tough choice. He, white's threat is simply queen h5 followed by rook h1 or the reverse order of moves also possible. So he has to do something about his king side. Um, so what he played was f5, trying to make room to for his king eventually to escape. However, he missed a forced win after this, which we'll see. So the best chance of defense was for black to immediately play king to g8, and then only after uh, only after a couple more moves does black move his f-pawn to avoid what happened in the game. Uh, so Keres would play rook h1, threatening queen h5, f5 would transpose to the game. So knight f8 is what black has to do to cover the h7 square. And now after queen h5 to play f5 because queen h8 mate was threatened. This position was interesting to look at. Black's uh, pieces on the queen side, are, queen side aren't playing yet and it's hard for him to communicate with the king side. His queen can't challenge the white queen by going queen f7 because queen h8 is mate. The black king has no escape. The knight has to stay on f8. Uh, however, it's hard for whites to make progress. So you can see, you can see another game, another position rather similar to this in my game, in one of my games in this series. Uh, I forgot the name of my opponent at the moment, but uh, it was, uh, you can find in this series a similar sacrifice in a very similar kind of position. So white has to bring up reinforcements, and black also has to. Uh, it turns out that white is more efficient in bringing up re reinforcements. He can play the move rook h3. The point is that the rook can shift to the g file then, after a check on h8. So black has a move to do something, but there's not much he can do, actually. He can't move his g pawn. Uh, white will just take it. Queen f7 is met by queen h8 mate. Uh, the king can't run, so he has to either just take on d4 or bring a knight out with knight c6. There's not much else that advice that can be given. White's going to do the, more or less the same thing after either of them. The, the most interesting variation is uh, c takes d4. If knight c6, white just checks on h8, king f7, rook g3, and it's similar to what we'll see except that black's not attacking the knight on c3, so he doesn't have the possibilities of sacrificing his queen. So instead, c takes d4. White uh, checks on h8. It's also possible, I think, to go knight c to e2. 
and uh, this is uh, this is also something. Queen h8 is the most concrete, king f7, and now rook g3. Despite white being down a piece, uh, he has very strong threats. Queen h8, or queen h5 in some cases could happen, but also mainly rook takes g7, followed by taking the black queen, and even though black will have sufficient material for the queen, white's attack will be too strong. So for instance, d takes c3, here, white will play rook takes g7 check, king f8, and rook takes c7, king takes c7. Now queen f6 check, king e8, and knight h5. Uh, this, is, this is one way uh, for white uh, to reach a winning position. The black knight on f8 can't be defended actually because knight g7 is unstoppable. Knight Knight, either knight to d7 allows knight to g7 mate, so black will have to give up the knight on f8, and white will remain with a winning material advantage. So, after rook g3, the best try for defense is g6. Also, g5 is met by queen h5 check, and then rook takes g5 check, g6, trying to delay white and run the king to the queen side then knight takes g6 would be uh, the, the way to go forward. The knight is sacrificed uh, to break down white black's defense before he can escape. Knight takes g6 is forced, and now queen h5. So white wants to actually to take on g6 with a rook so that he can get that into the game. Checking not always the most important here. For instance, queen h7, the black king runs away. Queen h5, now the queens are opposed, black has white is to take with the queen. King d7, and we see that the rook on g3 isn't really in it yet. So better is queen h5, king e8. Uh, there's nothing else. White threatens queen takes g6, followed by queen to g8 mate. So black has to start running. Rook takes g6, threatening, among other things, rook takes e6 check. King d7. Now, here... White can actually win the black queen, but the most, but first white should uh, take on d5, so the knight's not captured on c3, and this is actually pretty important to break up black's position. So white's going to win the queen, but black is going to be up, uh, have enough pieces for the queen. It's just that white will have a lot of pawns, and black's pieces will be just, uh, will, will not be coordinated. After e takes d5, which is forced, otherwise if the queen moves, white will have, uh, white will have moves like queen h7 check, and the black king will not escape. E takes d5, and now queen h8. And strangely enough, white just wins the black queen. There's no escaping from rook to g7. Uh, of course, if the queen goes away somewhere here, then white can play, it at a minimum, queen h7 check, forcing black to give up the queen anyway, queen e7. And then there's rook g7. There's also rook d6 check there, which is even better. Probably also have rook to g7 check here and taking the bishop and some sort of mating attack, but uh, definitely black can't save the queen. So next white is going to play rook e7 and win the queen. Black will have a rook, a knight, and bishop for the queen, but white will also have some pawns and black's position will be very uh, lacking in coordination. Uh, so for instance, knight c6, rook to g7. And still, it's difficult to give up the queen in a, in a good way. If king c7, white would take. And then queen f6, which is a big problem for black. Uh, if black takes, then queen takes. And again, it's very difficult. Black can't develop his pieces on the queen side. And white will start, for instance, here. It's possible to play e6. And if the bishop takes, there's queen f8 check. So black is in big trouble, even in this line. So in the game, black played king to g8. Also here, if g6, this is much simpler. Queen h3 check, king g7, rook h1, and there's no stopping a quick checkmate on h8, or, or h6 and then h8. So f5. Rook h1 check, king g8, and now queen h5 would, uh, after knight f8, black could transpose into what we just saw. Uh, 
However, white has something even better here. It's There's the idea of knight to g6, but knight to g6 isn't, uh, isn't good here because queen to g5 is check. So instead, Karas switched the move order and played rook h8 immediately, and black resigned. He has to take the rook because of king f7, queen h5, followed by mate. If king takes, then knight g6 check, king g8. He has to go there if king h7, queen h5 only helps white. And now knight takes c7 check. And then white takes the bishop on c8 next and is left with a queen against a rook. So this is an example of the uh, Greek gift sacrifice in a, an unusual form. This is important to know these themes and be able to adapt them to a variety of situations because you're not going to get the exact same position where you can just carry out uh, Greek gift sacrifice in the way that Capablanca did in that very first game. Uh, most likely it's going to come in some other form. A pawn that has invaded your opponent's side of the board, usually on their third or sixth rank, uh, the third or sixth rank that is, uh, can be referred to as a nail or a thorn in your opponent's position. And this can create a very powerful attack. This is a very powerful attacking force. Uh, and many um, many attacks in the king have evolved around such a pawn as the primary attacking unit, uh, despite its nominal uh, low worth. We'll see a really nice, very clear example of this in a beautiful game played by Bobby Fischer uh, from a tournament in Vinkovici, uh, 1968. Uh, this is a town in former Yugoslavia. Uh, his opponent, who had the white pieces in this position, was Emil Nikolic, uh, and uh, Fischer had black. The position arose from some form of King's Indian, uh, and uh, we can see that there's both sides uh, have sort of divided the board into their area of influence. Black is attacking the king's side, white is attacking the queen's side, and things have really heated up. White's about to play a6, completely destroying black's pawn chain on the queen's side. Uh, but Fisher also has gathered his pieces around the white king. Although there are no open lines there yet, he has a number of pieces all aimed at the white king, which is not well protected. All of, Both of these knights and the black bishops and also queen are ready to begin the attack, but some path in has to be found, and Fisher found it uh, with the move bishop g4, very surprising peace sacrifice just giving up the piece for one pawn, but opening the h file and providing uh, the possibility then to check on f3 with the knight afterwards and establish this uh, this thorn in white side on f3, which we'll be seeing. Uh, it's kind of unique in a way because black's attack proceeds relatively slowly in some of the coming positions. Uh, this is what uh, I think pretty instructive feature of this game is that black's attacks are not on the very next, threats are not on the very next move, but sometimes in order of two or three moves away, but still very strong. These kinds of positions are, are somewhat unusual and sometimes difficult to to play, difficult to calculate, because you're often calculating relatively quiet moves, but uh, when the threat comes, then, then it's over. Bishop g4 was, I think, the strongest move here. h4 it would be a way of trying to open lines, and if white pushes on to g4, of course black will sacrifice a piece there. Uh, but white's not going to do it, and this move doesn't really create new threats uh, for black. So white would continue with a6, and uh, it's hard to see how black's going to directly attack the white king. Notice that if h takes g3 at some point, such as now or some later point, f takes g3 actually helps white quite a bit, because now the rook on f1 is open and there's sort of defensive lines on the second rank uh, that white can use also space for his king to escape and so on compared to the game white has a lot of breathing room even if he only has two pawns covering his king instead of three there is another possibility here knight f3 check uh, but uh, after white takes takes queen takes black can regain the pawn by taking on f4 and then taking on h3 uh, threatening the rook on f1 but he's given up his most of his attacking chances as well. Although he removed white's fianchetto bishop, it's still not easy to get to the white king. Uh, 
White's queen is active on f4 and covers some important squares. Notice the knight on f6 is also under attack somewhat, and white's attack on the queen side will continue with a6 coming soon, or b takes c6 followed by rook f to b1 and rook to b7. So this was also not as good. Fisher played very strong with bishop g4, and white had to accept the sacrifice, basically. And that's what he did. He took on g4. If he moved his queen away to, let's say, queen to b3, this would allow black to check on f3. And without any cost of material, he improves his attacking prospects. Uh, so white would have to take this knight, because otherwise, if king h1, then bishop takes f4, followed by taking on h3. Uh, so he has to take the knight. And here, black can take the bishop. Pawn takes is also possible. Uh, it's also a possibility and might, might be also quite strong uh, with bishop takes f4 as a threat and of course taking the bishop would be similar to the game. Meanwhile bishop takes f3 is what Fisher gave in his comments to the game uh, and then b takes c6, b takes c6, queen b7, white has to get some kind of play of his own. Queen f5, the black queen, black obviously doesn't trade queens which would leave the white king relatively safe and would leave white with the, the initiative on the queen side and chances to attack black's weak pawns there. Instead, black keeps the queen. Um, now, there's no real strengthening the king side for white, so all he can do is try to gobble up black center and, uh, and move forward with his attack. So queen takes c6, bishop takes f4, e takes f4, and now knight to g4 check is very strong. Uh, and here, if king g1, if, if h takes g4, then black simply takes back with a threat of queen h5 check followed by queen h1 mate, which is very hard to stop. A, a bishop like this is, is even stronger than the pawn on f3, which we'll be seeing in the game. If queen takes d5, then a nice tactic, king g7. And... Black threatens rook h8 for all by rook h1, uh, and it's unstoppable. White can take the queen, but rook h8 anyway. So, meanwhile, if uh, after knight to g4 check, if king to g1, then another pretty concluding move, knight e5. This move uh, attacks the white queen and opens up the way for the black queen to go to h3 and force checkmate. So black wins. Therefore, white took the bishop, black took back with the pawn. Of course, he's taking with the pawn. The point was not to give one check knight to g4, which would only force the white king back where it wants to go, and white would persist with his attack then a6 coming next, and black has no way to the white king. Uh, black instead takes with the pawn, which opens the h file, which is black's main route into white's king side, and also supports the move knight f3, so black will establish a pawn on f3. So here, white played uh, rook h1. His only hope is, despite the fact that it takes a couple moves for black to create threats in the h file, uh, white has to prepare for, for the, the inevitable arrival of either a rook or the queen on the h file. So he played rook h1, preparing to run his king away via g1, f1, and so on. And this is probably the best defensive try. If white just ignored black's threats with a6, then black would check on f3. White would have to take this this knight. Of course, if his king went to h1, black would take on uh, take the knight on f4, for instance, and take the knight on f4, followed by queen h5, uh, queen f5, planning queen h5, and there would be no defense to this. So white would have to take the knight anyway and just lose time. We made it very quickly. So white has to take, g takes f4, or g takes f3, uh, and now after a takes b7, very nice finish with black can play, uh, which black can play here, despite a huge lack of material, he'll force checkmate. Knight to g4 check, first of all, preventing white from getting the rook to h1, king g1, and now black just ignores the rook on a8. He only needs, uh, he doesn't really even need either of his rooks, actually. Bishop takes f4, removing this defender. White can take the rook. Black just takes back. And now next is coming, regardless of what white does, basically queen f5, queen h5. So for instance, e takes f4, queen f5. Uh, 
and despite the fact that it takes two more moves to checkmate, there's no way for white to uh, to defend. His king can't escape. Notice the very important role of this pawn on f3, uh, which is uh, which is covering g2 and e2, keeping and also keeping basically a barrier against the white pieces coming over to help defend. Uh, so the only way white could defend this position, if somehow, uh, would be if somehow his queen could move out of away from d1 the bishop away from d2, and then achieve knight d2 to e3, and exchange off black's knight before the black queen gets to h3, which is obviously not going to happen. So that uh, that would so ignoring the attack wasn't possible. Black's move, threats would take a few moves, but they would be unstoppable. So white has to prepare for them. Uh, another way of trying to prepare looks weird, but uh, uh, is something to consider. Rook uh, bishop h1, making the room for the king on g2. So white refuses to take the knight on f3, making and instead just leaves his king on g2. But we can imagine after knight f3 check king g2 that such a position can't possibly be uh, be, uh, be sound. And in fact, of course, it's not. Uh, black would take on f4, again removing this defender. e takes f4, same response after g takes f4. Queen f5, and now the threat is queen h5, followed by queen h3 mate or queen h2 mate. Uh, so white would have to prepare an evacuation for his king, rook to g1. And he would be overjoyed if black would take this rook on g1. Then white would suddenly have, uh, would be able to arrange a defense and he would still have a small material advantage. But instead black's not going to exchange this powerful knight for the rook on g1, but just continues bringing the queen uh, in with queen h5. Queen h3 mate is a threat, so white has to run. King f1, queen h2, threatening the rook on g1, which can't be defended. Um, if if king e2, uh, for instance, uh, only then would black take the, the rook on g1, which because just wins a rook and black's up in material with uh, winning attack. So white would have to finally take the knight allowing black once again this powerful uh, thorn in, in, in white's position. E takes f3. White's position is cut in half. Also, the e-file is opened up, so the white king has no escape. Threat is queen h3, followed by mate on g2. So white would have to try to run with bishop e3, uh, making it so the king can escape via the e-file, but then would come rook takes e3. Um, and after f takes e3, Queen takes b2, and white is lost. Not only is black now up material with this, still this powerful pawn on e3, but white can't defend his position. The knight is under attack. The pawn on b5 is under attack. The knight moves. The knight, black knight comes to e, e4. Also, the rook on a8 hasn't even yet entered the game, so it can come to e8. So it's hopeless position for white. So Nikolic played rook h1 preparing to escape with his king. Knight f3 check. It was crucial that black get this check in when white's forced to capture it. If the king were already on g1, it would go to f1 and white would escape. But now he has to take the knight. Bishop takes f3. G takes f3. Black also opens the diagonal for his queen. This is important. The queen has to be able to aim at h3. Uh, and uh, g4 is also open, possibly for the knight. And so here... Once again, there's no one-move threat. Black's threat is the order of two or three moves. Bishop f4 followed by bringing the queen in, or the maneuver, which we'll see in a second, uh, to bring the rook in. Uh, so white has to anticipate it, though. There's no time to delay, uh, as we'll see. Uh, so he played king to g1, preparing to run his king, and if he's given time, he will, he will succeed. If there was another possibility of defense, perhaps the most challenging one, to avoid black taking the knight on f4, uh, just to keep the knight with knight h3. It looks very passive, but at least white has some defenders around his king still. Uh, nevertheless, the position is uh, very bad for white. So, for instance, king g7. Black has to get the rook into the game, so he prepares to bring it to h8. King g1. Again, black's threat isn't immediate, but the in two moves after rook h8, threat will be queen takes h3 check followed by moving the bishop, and which will be checkmate. 
So white has to keep running, rook h8. Uh, and now the problem is that white, if white keeps running with king f1, his rook is unguarded. So bishop g5 uh, just wins the knight on h3 because it's pinned and can't be protected. Black wins the knight and then invades the queen and easily wins the game. So if the, the king has to stay on g1, if white presses ahead on the queen side, then black can break through with bishop takes e3, vacating the h file so that he'll take the knight on h3. After bishop takes e3, for instance, rook takes h3, rook takes h3, queen takes h3, threatening mate, queen f1, and then queen h5, and white has no defense against the other rook coming over, rook h8, or knight to g4, either one of those. So in this position, white could play queen f1, which would stop black's immediate threats like bishop takes e3, but would leave white completely tied up on the king's side. The knight is stuck, can't move, because if it goes to f4, black will take it. The rook obviously can't move, the queen has to stay where it is, so you can't really play a position like this. Black can play now even rook h7, doubling the rooks and renewing the threat of bishop takes e3, and there's nothing much that white can do in the meantime. Queen side play is too slow. Uh, so, in the game, white continued running with king g1. Black took on f4, removing the knight. e takes f4. And now, it was crucial that black have calculated this position at the outset, basically. I don't know if he did probably, or maybe just intuition is enough, but he has to play only one, only one move, because if he's too slow, white will actually escape with king f1, king e1, bishop e3, and king runs to d2, and so on, and black will be losing. So it actually was uh, was necessary that black play the next move. He has to get a rook into the, a rook into the game. Uh, the queen and knight are, are insufficient to do anything to white, so king to g7 was the way to continue. The black rook is coming to h8 to trade off white's rook on h1 and then take the h-file, which, which will be uh, deadly for white. So here, white played f5, hoping to open a line for the bishop on d2, as we'll see in a moment. If he continued running with king f1, he would be too slow. Black would play rook h8. And now, of course, the trade of rooks would not help white, because rook h1 would be coming inevitably. So white would have to keep the rook uh, and go rook uh, g1. And now a very nice conclusion, which would show how strong this pawn on f3 is, this thorn in white's side. Queen h3 check, king e1, queen g2. Queen sacrifice, but uh, white uh, can't avoid mate now. If rook takes g2, rook h1 followed by mate. So, meanwhile, if white didn't play f5, but instead tried to uh, renew his long defunct queenside attack, he never managed to play this a6 uh, in the game, actually, but if he tried it now, black would be faster. Rook h8 threatening rook h1 followed by queen h3. Uh, the only defense is to bring the queen over to defend, but then rook h1, king h1, rook h8 check, king g1, queen f5. And once again, black's attack takes a couple moves, but it's unstoppable. Queen h5 can't be stopped, and then checkmate on h1 or h2. So white tried f5. Uh, his hope is that if black takes his pawn, there's bishop h6 check, he blocks the h-file and buys himself the time to escape. Uh, that's not something black can allow. So Fisher played rook h8, immediately uh, fighting for the h-file, preparing to remove white's rook and then take the h-file. And it, only then queen takes f5 and bring the queen in. So in desperation, white played bishop h6 check, giving back the piece, hoping to slow black's attack down. Otherwise, there was nothing white could do. We've seen all this, the same thing before. So, for instance, queen f1, queen f5, and next comes rook h1, rook h8, and queen h5. No, no defense. There's no, no time for white to do anything. Um, same thing if rook h8, rook h8. There's no stopping queen f5, followed by queen h3, or even rook h1 check or queen h5 if the white queen go, goes to f1. It's just, to, although the threat is, takes a couple of moves to carry out, white has no counterplay, so in a sense the position is relatively slow, despite black's peace sacrifice. Uh, 
So bishop h6 is what Nicolaj chose. Rook takes h6, rook takes h6, king takes h6, and here white checked with the queen on d2, probably with the point being to vacate d1 for the knight. Otherwise, again, if white tried a6, his long hoped for breakthrough would be long too, would be far too late. Black's attack would come first in a very beautiful way also. Uh, white will actually manage to take the whole queen side, but even that won't be enough. Queen takes f5, threatening queen h3. Uh, if queen f1, uh, well, it does, we'll see in a second, because if queen f1, it's still going to be rook h8. It'll transpose to what we see in a second. So queen takes f5, doesn't threaten queen h3 because queen f1, but after a takes b7, black brings the rook into it. Rook h8. And uh, again, it's black's threat is very slow. He has to move his king and then get his queen to the h-file. Uh, but it's uh, there's no time for white to do anything, primarily because of this very powerful pawn, which is separating white's pieces from the king side. It's creating a barrier on f2 and f3 for white. The only square where the pieces can communicate is by f1. The queen will go there, um, but it won't help. So the only thing white can try is to just break through faster. Uh, b takes c6. Now king g7. Slowly black prepares to get his rook in, opens up his rook. And now basically after no matter what white does, the same thing will happen. So c7, for instance, rook h1 check, deflecting the white king and allowing the black queen to enter with gain of time. King h1, queen h3 check, king g1, queen g2. That's the same thing black would do if white even played b8. It's also the same rook h1. And if meanwhile, if queen f1, then queen h5. And this was inevitable as well with mate on h1. So white tried queen to d2 check. Now g5. White couldn't find anything else, any, any defense. There's no time to run with the king. Again, if king f1, um, then black would play queen takes f5, king e1, and now black can play queen h3. And while the white king will escape, black's also up some pawns uh, and will break through again with the help of this pawn on f3. So for instance, king to d1, black could play knight to g4, king to c2, queen f1, and f2 pawn is hanging, e3 also can be played. Uh, so black will soon queen the pawn. It's just hopeless for white. So while the white king would escape, black would black's attack still would have reached its goal. Instead, white took on c6, and now there was no more time to run. Black played queen takes f5. No need to take back on c6. Black threatens queen h3. Uh, so white played knight to d1 to bring his knight to e3 and defend. Uh, now came queen h3, knight e3, and the final move, king g6. And now next is coming rook h8 or knight to g4. And white uh, has no defense. So white resigned here. So it's very important. Uh, pr it's a very important principle in the attack that this kind of pawn on your opponent's third rank or your sixth rank, depending on your point of view, uh, can be a major force and often can compensate for lack of a piece. This kind of position is frequently seen in such situations where the attack develops slowly, but the opponent has no time uh, to defend because there's a lack of communication due to the huge space advantage.